Hello, viewers. Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, bringing you another dungeon crawl video. This video features one of the more skin crawling dungeons in Skyrim. Also, there will be a bonus follow up at the end of this video. Harmugstal is located just northwest of the Dragon Tooth Crater, if you can see it, right, and northwest of the Shrine of Pyrite. It's just right up from Dragon Tooth Crater, and you can walk there. And it's a little southeast of Bruca's Redoubt. After Harmagstall, you be you come upon an adventurer. So let's go down and I'm going to prepare with my bow and sneaky sneaky up, but let's get going. That was a close one. I don't know, but this place is full of them. Everyone I've encountered has been enchanted or the like. Look, I'm getting out of here. Normally spiders make my skin crawl, but magic spiders? <laughs> okay, the adventurer mentioned magic spiders. Spiders normally are kind of creepy. And, well, now that they are magic or somehow have magic powers... Let's find out what's going on here. Okay, uh, in the distance there's a spider on a table. Now, normally I'm really kind of, I mean, spiders, they're kind of creepy and webs all over the place and kind of yucky. But this is actually kind of an interesting dungeon. And after I've looted this shelf here, let's go take a look at the spider on the table. There's the dungeon entrance you can see right there. But let's take a look at what's on the table here a spider oh wow it's good size one take the frostbite venom and you can see that effect of magic and then these potions here resist fire that's kind of interesting so let's go and enter the dungeon proper and let's start finding out why these spiders have magical powers Oh, look, awesome. A freaking stupid lever flippy thing to try and open up the dungeon properly. I'm just going to fast forward through this entire embarrassing situation.
Okay, the combination is you pull all of them back. And eventually you open up the gate to get into this dungeon. Now, this is where the real fun begins. Some skulls, you know, over here. Brazier, nothing really too scary. But, hey, there's spiders lurking around every corner in this dungeon. can kind of hear the spiders in the background. Let's take a look here. There's some notes on this alchemy table. Notes and results. It would seem the smaller specimens cannot survive the infusion process. Application of the serum results in short burst of elemental energy followed by death. I will have to change the formula before trying again. The larger subjects, uh, however, have taken to the transformation nicely. For now, they are stored away in whatever. So let's go hunt some spiders. Okay, so this dungeon is actually rated, and I looked it up online, if you are a level 8 character, you probably would have some difficulty with this dungeon. My character is level 40 something, and yeah, so this is relatively easy for my character because he has bone armor, a bone cross, or a bone bow and firing ebony arrows probably take down some spiders real easy so let's just continue on this is kind of an interesting dungeon Okay, this area is probably the pens, or wherever the spiders were being held, mentioned in the journal just a while back. So, let's scope it out, see if we can kill any more spiders, and let's find some more creepiness.
Okay, this is where we meet the bad guy. I guess the master of creating magical spiders. He's kind of creepily down there talking to spiders. Okay, let's see what Cornalis has. This is the bad guy. Daedra Heart, eh, empty gem, key, eh, some basic stuff. Iron Dagger of Diminishing, Staff of Lightning, yeah. Now we'll go check out the spiders. Yeah, caged spiders. Kind of like shooting um, fish in a barrel in a sense. Real easy for me to do, and let's check these guys out. Just basic stuff, and we'll continue on to the real creepy part of this dungeon. Two giant frostbite spider. Ooh. Now, it's obvious that this Cornalis guy was infusing spiders with some sort of potion or something to make them have magical properties. Now, I'm going to grab some of the alchemy ingredients. You know, I mean, spider eggs, great for making some nasty potions. And then I'm going to go back to Cornalis' office and see what the master treasure chest holds. But before I do that, I'm going to show you, you go up these stairs and through this door, and it brings you to the area above the main entrance where you first start out. And there's a treasure chest over there, but I'm going to go back to Cornalis' office and check it out. Okay, he's got some giant spiders lying around. I'm guessing this is where he did his study and maybe some vivisection, but it's kind of creepy. There's also some alchemy ingredients, which are really useful. Um, naturally, take up all those. Eh, gloves, no. Some other stuff. Well, I'm going to go over and to the main after I loot his area, touch the shrine here, and get a blessing, I guess. And let's check out what's in the dresser. Eh, stuff. And let's check out the main chest. 
Okay, gold, soul gem, scroll, emerald necklace, dwarven bow, not bad stuff. So, this is pretty much the end of the dungeon. I'm going to run back out to the exit. Uh, no need to show you that. Oh, maybe I'll just fast forward to it. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. As always, thanks for stopping by. As promised, there is a bonus feature at the end of this video. I'm going to show you how much you get from all the Dwemer scrap metal and stuff that you collect from the Tower of Ultifod. And you can you know, if you can carry it all, which I can because I modified my boots to have an insane carrying capacity, but all this stuff can be smelted down, and I'll show you how many ingots you get out of smelting this metal. That all the smelting is done here is how many ingots you will get it is 75 dwarven metal ingots from the scrap metal if you can carry it all from the Altifod tower that is unmarked on the map now I'm gonna go back to Yzold's house I married Yzold remember and hey it's a free place to sleep and a really free place to store stuff. Hi honey, I'm home. Actually, Zold moved to, um, ah shoot, I forgot where she moved to, where I bought a house, but I use this place as a storage place because, and a place to sleep, because there are merchants nearby where I can sell all kinds of garbage after, you know, adventuring. Like I said, if you marry Yzold, who also, well, she happens to be a drug dealer, you get to live in her house. And it's a free location. And again, I would encourage you to marry her, whether she's a drug dealer or not, whatever. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. As always, thanks for stopping by.